In John 13, 35, Jesus was telling his disciples, which still applies to us today as Christ followers, as those that have laid down their lives to be more and more like Jesus in the earth. Jesus said, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples. If you have this, everyone will know that you are following me. And that's what I wanna talk about this week. My name is Kara Marie Morris. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune into the Words in Season podcast. Most importantly though, remember that every time that you open the Bible for yourself, that Jesus always has a word in season for you. So the mark of a truly mature Christian, of someone who is following after the Lord is love. Like we looked at the intro in John 13, 35, he said, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. He didn't say by your clothing. He didn't say by your bumper sticker. He didn't say by what church or denomination you're a part of. He said by this, the love of God that you will be known as mine. It will be the mark of your life. So in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 31, it says, earnestly desire the best gifts the highest gifts and the choices graces and yet I will still show you a more excellent way one that is far better and highest above them all and that is love and in 1st Corinthians 13 it continues to talk about what is this love it's not just a worldly love it's not based on feelings it's not based on my own opinion and constantly throughout my day there's different times in my life where I have to remind myself because this forgets, this forgets, my own opinion forgets because of what's going on in my world. But as a Christian, we have the privilege, again, like we looked at in previous episodes, that we have the privilege to lay down our own will, just like Jesus did, because he knew that doing the will of the Father was why he was sent. And that is for us today as well. I know and my security comes from, and my direction, and my guidance, and my security, and, and my, the anchor for my soul here comes from knowing that I am doing the Father's will by being the love of God to myself and towards others. So then in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, starting in verse 1, If I can speak in tongues of men and even in angels, but have not love, that reasoning, intentional, spiritual devotion that is inspired by God's love, I'm only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting divine will and purpose, and understand all the secret truths and mysteries and possess all knowledge, and if I have sufficient faith so that I can move mountains, but I have not love, God's love in me, I'm nothing. I am a useless nobody. If I dole out all that I have to the poor, providing food, and if I surrender my body as a martyr to be burned in order that I may glory and give him glory, but I have not God's love in me, I gain nothing. And then it continues to stay started in verse 4. It continues to show us what is the love of God in my life. So the phrase in my heart this week was, yes, you can start again. And what does that mean in the context of love? It means that in, in our lives, there's things that we don't love. There's people that naturally we don't feel a propensity to. We don't love them. But the love of God is able to overcome any barrier, any feeling, anything that we don't think we have in common. I don't compare myself with other people and say, well, they don't do this, so I don't have to love them. Or they are this, so I don't have to love them but we have the love of God that is the most powerful force, not only in this world, but in the universe, which is why he created us to fellowship with him. So starting in verse four, 1 Corinthians 13, love endures long and is patient and is kind. Love is not envious and does not boil over with jealousy. It is not boastful or vainglorious. 
It does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, or inflated with pride. It's not rude or unmannerly, and it does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy, fretful, or resentful, and it takes no account of an evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice or unrighteousness, but it rejoices when right and truth prevails. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes and is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out, becomes obsolete or comes to an end. So this all consuming, most powerful force is now in us. I don't love people with a natural human love. I don't love even myself with a natural human love because that love is selfish and that love has an end. But the love of God that I extend to myself and to others is a super natural love. Now I can say, I am patient, I am kind. And the reason why it came up in my heart that it's never too late. You're never too far gone. And it's never too late to start again. It's because there's gonna be things that happen today. There's gonna to be things that happen this year where it's a constant reminder to myself. Just because that person isn't like you, just because they don't have the same viewpoint as you, just because the situation didn't happen the way that you thought the situation should happen. You know, sometimes I believe that I know what's going on here. I really know why they did that, but we don't get to judge the heart. God is the only one that judges motives, that sees into man's hearts. And what I get to do, praise God, the only thing that I'm responsible for is my own heart. In Proverbs 4.23, it says, keep and guard your heart. It doesn't say keep and guard your neighbor's heart or your boss's heart or your husband's heart or your kid's heart. It says, keep your heart with all vigilance and above all, guard, for out of it flows the springs of life. So the way that we live is coming from the heart and praise God as Christians we have the love of God that flows out of our heart so how are they gonna know that we're Christians by our love so what is the love of God of course we looked at 1st Corinthians 13 but also the love of God it learns to be assertive but not aggressive it learns to agree to disagree just because your viewpoint isn't my viewpoint doesn't make you a bad person or doesn't make you someone that I dismiss or doesn't even mean that there's someone something that you say that I can't enjoy. So just because we don't agree doesn't mean I have to be disagreeable. The love of God sees relationships as more important than being right. The love of God is not led by a feeling and yet doesn't treat feelings as evil. The love of God sees the value of all people, all churches, all Christians, all non-believers, because Jesus Christ died for the world and has now, he's living inside of all Christians. So the love of God sees value in all of God's creation as human beings. And the love of God is the mark of the truly mature Christian. So praise God, I am not the standard for love in my own life. So in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 12, it says, When they measure themselves with themselves and compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding and behave unwisely. So praise God, I am not the standard of love in my life. I am not the judge in my own life, but it's by this all men will know that I am his disciple. He didn't say even by the 10 commandments that I follow or because I'm a really good person or because I'm really nice. All those, those can be expressions of what the love of God looks like in that moment. He said, by this, if you have love for one another. And of course we know that love in the picture of Jesus Christ is laying his life down on behalf of others and yes maybe I'm not running in front of a bullet or in front of a car to save someone but what I am is shutting this up when I feel like gossiping and I'm 
thinking right thoughts and I think, oh no, I believe the best of every person. I don't know why they're doing that and I don't need to know why they're doing that. But yes, I can start again loving. Even if it means every 30 seconds, I am restarting my commitment to love myself to, with the love of God, to extend that to myself or to extend that to other people. There is, it is never too late to start again, to restart that love in me that all men will know us as Christians. So thank you for watching the Words in Season podcast. Remember you can find more episodes on Apple Podcasts, also on Spotify, on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Most importantly though, remember that every time that you open the Bible for yourself, that Jesus always has a word in season for you. Just one word in season and my heart goes to life.